But by March, the tone had changed, with the White House National Security Advisor saying, rather than using best practices, this outbreak in Wuhan was covered up. It probably cost the world community two months to respond. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman hit back tweeting, it might be US Army who brought the epidemic to Wuhan. Be transparent, make public your data. US owe us an explanation. In April, President Trump said the WHO was too China-centric and announced the US would suspend their funding. The WHO responded saying, we alerted the world on January the 5th. The virus was identified on January the 7th. The genetic sequence was shared on the 12th with the world. I want to clarify that the organization I work for is a conservative think tank, as you characterize it, but we focus on policies, not necessarily on, on personnel on who is in and out of the White House. So I just want to put that on the table. Um, I think it is definitely clear that China knew they had a problem on their hands as early as December. They started to censor their own um, internal communications on social media, and they actually punished um, the doctors who identified the virus. They called it the unknown Wuhan virus or pneumonia at that point, and they were censoring those things internally. But my um, question, so my question is prepared. directly about how President Trump responded on the 24th, of, starting on the 24th of January, right through to the end of February, and really the beginning of March, when he continually praised China for their transparency. Well, at that point, that was obviously what, um, what it looked like at the time, but we have since then learned more about what was happening inside China. So your time on was, was uh, alerting the world and the WHO, talking about uh, a potential cover-up in China, um, you know, in December. So it wasn't like the United States wasn't fully aware that it, China wasn't being transparent. Well, the WTO did not react at all to Taiwan's uh, warnings. And, and of course, Taiwan has been blocked from being part of the W, I'm sorry, WHO um, by China uh, for, for decades. Uh, Taiwan has been a model for all of us and definitely should be recognized for that. But part of China's um, plan here or, or tactic is, has been to divert attention from itself and to shift the blame for the spread of the virus to other countries, particularly I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring in Yan Zong. I mean, does Hella have a point here? You know, China wasn't transparent in the early stages. Taiwan did attempt to uh, alert the world. A and yet, um, you know, China did very little in those first few weeks. That was crucial, really, to containing this virus. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, there's, well, certainly I agree that uh, China initially mishandled the, the crisis, you know, given that uh, the issue of uh, cover-up and inaction, especially at the local level. But we have to keep in mind, this is a very different virus, very different from SARS. It's highly transmissible, and it's also a potentially a, a lethal. And uh, even today, there's still a lot of unknowings about the virus. So, I think uh, you know, even today we saw that in many other countries, you know, even though they have you know, seen what China was doing and what China has experienced, they still mismanaged the crisis. Uh, so uh, even for Taiwan, when they alerted WHO for this the outbreak, they were not explicit in terms of saying that this is a human-to-human -human transmission. Uh, but but the, you know, some people would describe uh, some of the, the doctors in Wuhan who tried to alert of the world through Lancet reports, for example, of this kind of unknown potential coronavirus as, as heroes, and they were silenced too. That's right. I think uh, there's no doubt that in the initial uh, handling of the, uh, the crisis, a lot of that, that uh, those concerns, issues that, that have been raised, you know, in terms of the government's, you know, uh, intention, you know, trying to uh, cover up the outbreak, but most of that, from the information we know, seems to be occurring at the local, especially at the provincial level. Um, Hello, I'm, I'm going to bring you back in because you said that what China's trying to do is deflect attention from itself. But frankly, there are many critics who would say, with a million people infected in the United States, more than 45,000 deaths, the Trump administration is trying to deflect from its own failings in trying to deal with this virus in the United States. Well, actually, I mean, you have to look at the size of the population of the United States to really get a sense of those numbers. 
uh, the United States has over 300 million people. So you have to kind of compare that to the levels of other countries. Yes, we do have a lot of cases, but um, in terms of the death rate, we are below most European countries. And, and then, so, and then the, those same critics would say that the way that China has handled it has actually been better, because if China has 1.3 billion uh, people living there, and they've managed to now contain it relatively. Well, they, they, did, they did shut down Wuhan, and they did shut down, um, apparently now, another province. Um, which, which help, but we first of all, we don't know the accuracy of the Chinese numbers. China is not a transparent uh, country, and, and we cannot really trust the numbers that we're getting out of them. Um, but also, they did allow people to travel to celebrate the Chinese New Year from all over the world to go back home and um, bring the virus with them, whereas they shut down travel inside China. So we have to yeah, so well. I, I'm just going to um, ask you about that, because that was one of the things that, you know, uh, China was really criticized about, five million people traveling during Chinese New Year, which, which potentially escalated this problem globally. Uh, that's right. I think uh, that, uh, that, that there's indeed a, some kind of cons inconsistency here, why after January 23rd, China ordered the lockdown of Wuhan, prohibiting people from traveling. Uh, between uh, cities, you know, and, and uh, but in the meantime, there seems to be also people are still allowed. For example, yes, because you're, you're saying you're saying that this uh, the silencing of people was at a local level, but then uh, you know at, at, at a at a national level, so many millions of people were allowed to travel. Oh, uh, you mean travel between China and other countries? Yes. Oh. That, that's right. Well, in, the, 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 I think this is the, the, the inconsistency here, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether this is like out of uh, the uh, inconsistency of the policy or this is like intentional. Um, Hello, I'll bring you back in because how would you respond to those hawks who say, yes, the United States needs to be tougher on China, but frankly, the Trump administration's America first approach is self-defeating. They've alienated allies and friends and, and to go unilaterally after the WHO has not necessarily been the best policy. Well, first of all, the United States funds the WHO by almost a billion dollars. That was, the, that was our contributions for um, 2018 and 2019. By far the largest contrib contributor to the WHO, many, many times what China has contribute, contributed. So we, we first of all need to put that on the table. If you talk about international organizations, the United States funds most of them. Uh, but we have not taken the uh, funding yet off the table, the administration is looking into and investigating the WHO's response, which is the right way to do it. That was today's Coronavirus Explained, and you were listening there to Yan Zong Huang, Senior Fellow for Global Health at the Council on Foreign Relations, and Hella Dale, Senior Fellow for Public Diplomacy at the Conservative Think Tank Heritage Foundation, discussing the row between China and the US over the coronavirus outbreak.